Hello and welcome to ArchCloud Lab's second video on how to use Posh C2 in a Linux environment. By no means will we cover all of the ways that you can modify the initial bash or Python dropper for Posh C2. However, I hope to highlight a couple of ways and give you some inspiration to go on and find unique ways in your own environment. Now with that out of the way, let's get started on some simple modifications you can do to your payloads to help them fit your environment a little bit better. We're going to start with already having access to the remote machine and we see that we've placed the file pi underscore dropper dot pi in the home directory of the test user. Here what we're going to do is run nohup python the file and then we're going to redirect standard error into standard out and then background that whole command. So with that being done we see that we have a session and we can access the machine through our session but what did the nohub command do? Well, let's take a look at the man page. So let's consider the scenario where we have remote access to a machine over SSH and we want to run some long living commands. There's numerous ways to accomplish this, but the one that we're focusing on right now is with leveraging nohub. Typically, when you close out of your SSH shell, what happens is a signal of sigup gets sent to running processes, which causes them to hang up and die. We want to avoid that, and that's exactly what nohup does for us in this scenario. So we're able to background the processes, send standard error to standard out, take that, and then we can redirect that to another file. But if we don't, and in this scenario we didn't, by default there will be a nohup.out created. So this is something to keep in mind as an artifact that you're actually going to leave on disk, and we're going to look at how we can clean that up in the next section. So I went ahead and opened up the pydropper.sh, which will be in the payloads directory of your Posh C2 project. So I made a couple modifications that I want to point out, because typically all you see is the echo, the large Python statement, and then that'll get piped to Python 2. Here what we did is specify that I wanted to get this executed in a bash prompt. I'm going to go ahead and place nohup in front of Python 2, and then we're going to go ahead and redirect standard error into standard out. But then here we're also redirecting standard out to dev null. So what this does is it actually stops that nohup.out file from being created. Also at the end we do a little rm dollar sign zero, which actually deletes the, this current file. So think of this as something you could stage, uh, do a wget one-liner, it'll kind of clean up after itself and uh, then you should have a session. So little small modifications that you can make to the initial droppers to make your life a, a little bit easier that I've, I've found in some of the uh, red, red blue competitions I've been able to uh, participate in. So when we talk about ways to execute uh, not only Python scripts, but bash scripts and various executables in the Linux environment, there are numerous countless blogs that show very creative ways to go forth and uh, execute said utilities. Uh, one particular avenue I like to venture down is leveraging Vim as a way to execute both Python and Bash scripts. So that is one thing I want to kind of highlight here as a, as a nice, interesting technique. For uh, more, if you find yourself in a scenario where you want to kind of play with what uh, is already on a Linux machine, I definitely recommend checking out GTFO bins on GitHub, and I'm going to go ahead and link that down below, so be sure to check that out. So we see that we have a little dropper.sh, so we're going to use the bash version now. If you go ahead and go into command mode on Vim and do an exclamation mark, that will actually let you execute arbitrary commands. So you can see I just went ahead and executed that bash script and now I'm back in Vim. And now if I run a ps below, we can actually see that the dropper has been executed and then right beneath that we have a child process of Python 2. In this scenario, that's our actual payload running. So with those two examples, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up at uh, but I want to leave you with a nice little Bob Ross reference because uh, consider the Linux environment your canvas upon which you will paint interesting forms of execution uh, in order to achieve whatever goals you may have. Uh, so that is a nice little motivation of the, the video I hope to leave with you. Uh, Bob Ross gives me great joy and I hope he brings great joy into your life as well. So thank you for watching as always. Please like and subscribe and share. Thanks.